Hello, I'm Leroy Garcia, and this is Blue Rain Gallery Podcast. Today, we're honored to interview uh, Robin Jones, who we've had a podcast with before. You can refer to episode uh, 25 uh, by going to blueraingallery.com under the podcast bar and looking that up, or go to our YouTube channel or any other platforms. Um, Robin Jones, come on in. So we're going <laughs> to do a walk along today, guys. Um, so we're going to get to know her a little bit better. Um, this is a beautiful poster. We're going to talk about this last. How do you feel about that? I'm s amazed and honored and yeah, it just looks, I mean, it's, a beautiful it's, it's beautiful and it's amazing <laughs> to have it, you know, out here. out here. Yeah, where everyone can see it. <laughs> well, let's go inside. Let's talk about your work. <laughs> All right. So this is uh, the namesake for the show, and we'll let Robin uh, uh, give us an explanation be behind the title mm -hmm. and the meaning. Yeah, behind the show. It started with, um, actually it started with an article in um, this publication called The Overland Journal, and it's by um, a writer named Bonnie Mary Liston. And it was given to me a few years ago. Actually, when I was still in Seattle, there was a woman who bought a painting of mine. And she sent me this article. And I was so taken with it that I, I kept it. This is probably five, six years ago. It was called The Wildness of Girlhood. And it was all about this time in a young girl's life. Um, it happens to many girls, not every girl, but um, certainly it happened to me. Pre-adolescence, like around the age, ages 9 to 12, where girls, as she describes them, go completely wild and feral and free and playing in the forest and climbing trees and, and like this, um, this painting, um, becoming passionate about horses or wolves or witches and making potions and just creating these um, fantastical worlds um, in the natural world and being part of the natural world and um, that kind of, you know, um, wild love for nature. So, and then another part of the article talked about um, this ancient Greek practice called Arctiaia, which in ancient Greece, um, I think it was every four years, um, this group of girls between like ages five and 10 would this pra had this practice of going into the woods and donning bear skins and living like bears, like oh going wild. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And like, yeah, and just like being bears and worshiping the goddess Artemis. Mm -hmm. So all of this kind of combined to form this body of work. Um, all of these girls are pre-adolescent, um, and I really wanted to express that wildness of girlhood. Um, so this one, um, I titled Arctiaia after that, um, that ancient, um, Ath Athenian practice. And I really wanted to express that, you know, the, pa obviously the passion for horses and the energy and the power and the, and the kind of, um, interconnectedness of everything. So she's like one, you know, with, with the horses. these, mm -hmm. I think they're about 12 mm -hmm. partial, you know, horse, yeah, horse, horse bodies in here. Um, yeah, and just energy. I like the construct. It's also one of the more, um, you normally do more like uh, self-portrait stuff. Yeah. This is more flowing, uh, it's more of an action piece. It is, yeah, and it was it was a bit of a departure and an experiment, and um, the first time I've ever done this many beings, <laughs> you know, in a painting. So is this one uh, done on wood panel? or? It's on wood, yeah. yeah. And sometimes I really love using wood. I love, um, especially with bigger paintings sometimes, it's really nice to not have a frame, to just have it be as it is. Um, yeah, and there's something really cool about the surface of wood. It's a little, I mean, it's still smooth and the way I, you know, prepare it is pretty smooth, but it's got a little bit more texture. 
And I thought that worked. With well, when I uh, when I read your story, I I, I could relate because I had three daughters. And, um, That's right. I remember my <laughs> my middle daughter when she hit that period. She's like, I'm going to learn how to ride a bike. And we lived in Taos on this hill, and it was a dirt road. And I'm like, okay, here you go. And she went all the way down, and she totally had a blowout. Like, oh. dirt, stickers all over her, <laughs> you know, rashes all over. Yeah. And she got up, and she went back up and did it again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, brave... it reminded me of that story. But, yeah. Uh, She's like, mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm very determined. <laughs> I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to do it. Yeah, I am so powerful. I, I really like the messaging on that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> well, let's walk over <laughs> to this you. other one over here. Okay. That's all. We've just picked a, a few select pieces to talk about. Um, the show consists of about 15, 17 pieces. 15, 15 yeah. Pieces. Or 17 total. But yeah. 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 So this is titled Ghost of the Mountains. Mm -hmm. And there's a couple of uh, Tibetan scenes in this show, right? Yeah. Um, explain to us what's going on. It has a snow leopard. And yeah. So this, I've done quite a few Tibetan girls. I'm kind of fascinated by Tibet and um, having, you know, I practice Tibetan Buddhism. And um, so that kind of comes into some of these. But um, yeah, I loved, um, well, she, again, this is kind of the wildness, the being in nature. She's got barley, um, which grows, it's prevalent all over Tibet. Um, and there are a lot of things in, in this picture, too, that are um, endangered. The snow leopard has been um, threatened or endangered in various parts of the world, although there are um, conservation efforts in Tibet and Nepal and the Himalayas, and they are coming back, so that's awesome. That's wonderful. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I just they're just beautiful. They're just beautiful animals. They're, you know, elusive. They're um and did mysterious. I read that in the backside of uh, Tibet, there's glaciers and things on the backside. Yeah. A lot of snow, very high elevations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, the Himalayas are the highest um, mountain range in the world. And I actually included Mount Everest mm -hmm. right here, just kind of the shadow of Mount Everest um, as being the highest in the flowers. In the world. Yeah, and those are snow lotuses, which are I guess are also endangered um, because of the warming climate and the Himalayas. Himalayas are warming faster than any other place on the planet, except for um, the poles. So um, they are, and they are high elevation. I think they're the highest elevation flower um, in the world. Um, I just think they're beautiful. And um, So remind us again, like most of your portraiture deals with um, either environment or endangerment, mm -hmm. but also young, young ladies. Yeah. Um, remind us again why, what, what drives you on that? Well, these, uh, actually a lot of the young girls in this show are indigenous and, um, I like, I really, it's important to me to represent, um, girls from around the world to have that. I think representation is important and, um, indigenous, um, young, uh, well, indigenous cultures, um, also their, their, um, ancient practices of sus sustainability and um, care for the natural world and the environment are so important now. And I think there's a lot of talk within the climate um, community um, about incorporating indigenous practices um, and care um, into, you know, the kind of plans for how we tackle um, climate chaos. Yeah. So, um, well, definitely climate chaos is out there. <laughs> 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 yes, it is. Well, let's see. Let's visit with Mrs. Uh, the Twelfth Terra. Oh, yeah. Um, that would be over here. In yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is another Tibetan girl. Um, and again, I have Mount Everest. I'm kind of obsessed with the Himalayas. Um, so she, so in Tibetan Buddhism, there are, um, this is more of kind of a spiritual painting as well and a more... Um, yeah, kind of positive, kind of hopeful, um, hopefully, um, peace. Um, there are, so in Tibetan Buddhism, there are 12, there are 21 Taras. Um, Tara was a female Buddha. So the 21 Taras are kind of, they're considered um, deities. Um, they're aspects of Tara. Um, so I want to do a painting of the 12th Tara. Um, traditionally, she's... Um, kind of the regulator of seasons. And more recently, um, she's been referred to as the climate change Tara. Oh. So I thought that was obviously very appropriate, appropriate to the show. And um, I know, love the way you did the, the dragonflies and the cherry Thank blossoms. You. And uh, what type of bird is this? Actually, I can't remember what kind of bird that is. I, um, I, loved, I love the look of it. 
Um, Gives it a good balance. With the, yeah, because there's so much warmth yeah. in the palette that I really wanted that, um, you know, the Everest is kind of the cool, cool to kind of balance out, you know, on either side. Um, but yeah, then there's cherry blossoms and then there's, these are global, what do they call global skimmers, the dragonflies. Uh -huh. And they're prevalent in um, the Himalayan region, but they also travel as far as like Washington state. Mm. So they're global travelers. Well, amongst um, the uh, Native American tribes over here, that's a very spiritual insect. Oh yeah. They use it a lot. Uh, it's a representation of fertility. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. yeah they're, I love using dragonflies and they're just visually, they're just, yeah. they're so beautiful. I, I like her yeah. hair that very traditional for for yeah for, <laughs> for, Tibet. for Tibet yeah yeah and she's got and the twelfth Taras also there are three different um, types of Taras there's the peaceful there's semi wrathful and there's wrathful uh -huh. and she's peaceful oh, so nice. she's got that really kind of serene very present you know powerful but peaceful she seems look. content <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah that's what I was that's awesome going for all right let's yeah. go and uh, talk about the uh, meditation on the oh yeah Holocene. the Holocene. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, one thing so, I noticed a, a, a lot of the work on this show, and in, in general, you're using uh, foil, uh, gold foils. Yeah. Um, what's your reasoning for that? What do you like about it? Well, I've been using metal leaf um, in a, in most of my work, just um, because I was well, just purely aesthetically, I love the um, the light shifting quality of it and the glowing aspect of it. And it almost gives um, a three dimensionality to the, you know, to the, to the painting. Um, so this one and, and some of the others I've, um, I really exper experimented with more um, in, uh, complex composition. So there's more actual paint and less less leaf but the leaf that is there I, I kind of wanted to create a glowing kind of a glowing back, mm -hmm. back backdrop you know kind of background i think um, it's beautiful the way you thank you're using you it. yeah thank you yeah, and um so is this an amazonian these piece? these girls are from myanmar myanmar um, oh yeah yeah now war-torn myanmar mm -hmm. since the coup um um and they all again have the cherry blossoms which are really prevalent in southeast asia um, these are two different types of dragonflies. They're blue admiral mm -hmm. um, um, butterflies and the blue pansy butterfly. And they're um, also very typical, um, typically found in Southeast Asia. I like the yeah. the wood earrings. I, oh, I, like that. Yeah. I think that looks like wood or something. They are, yeah, they're to enlarge the, mm -hmm. yeah, to the, the ear. And then the shadows, yeah. you know, kind of the shit, because the light's coming from above, so the shadow cast on her ear and those kind of there. Oh, and beautiful. she's, um, yeah, again, very peaceful, kind of reminded me of a little baby Buddha, you mm -hmm. know? Um, yeah. This is nice. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> all right, this, this one I really like. Um, I like them all, but. Ah, oh, thank you. If only we were brave enough to see it. Yeah, and that, um, the title comes from an Amanda Gorman um, poem, um, The Hill We Climb. Mm -hmm. It's the second to last a line in the poem, which is such a powerful, it's just a powerful. And this is your poster piece word. outside on the front. Yeah, and it's also, yeah, I'm very honored to <laughs> have that out there. <laughs> Again, I love the um, tonal qualities that you, uh, thank you were able to paint on her. Thank you. Yeah, she's, um, she is uh, of the Gabra um, community. They're indigenous to, um, northern Kenya and southern Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. They're semi-nomadic. Um, and with her, they're um, red-veined drop-wing dragonflies. Those and I originally, beautiful. thank <laughs> I you. Like and they're such beautiful, they're just beautiful dragonflies. And originally I had more flora, um, kind of flora around her, um, kind of all over. And then the more I worked on her and as her face was, coming together and coming out and the and the look was so powerful that I felt like everything around her was was distracting was taking away from you know the power of her gaze yeah so I ended up getting rid of almost everything yeah. <laughs> except for the dragonflies which I, I think thought that was the right added. course to go because she <laughs> she's so beautiful and oh, uh, maybe you. the floor would have taken away you yeah. Know, it competed. Yeah. Uh, it's really stark. The eyes, the, yeah. the lips. You know, she's. Thank you. She's very yeah. Beautiful. She's she's elegant. She's got an elegance and a and a power 
you know, and a confidence in that, in that gaze. Oh, yeah, and again, indigenous um, girl. Well, yeah. thank you for giving us a little quick uh, pr preview of your yeah. show. Um, thank you. Robin's show opens this Friday. I encourage everybody to come down and visit with her and experience her aura. <laughs> <laughs> um, a very beautiful person inside and out. I'd like to thank Robin Jones for participating in our Walk Along podcast today. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, you can go to our website. All her images are posted along with all her stories. I encourage everybody to uh, read them. Uh, also, like to encourage people to uh, our audience to subscribe to us on our uh, for our podcast on any of the platforms. Uh, you can also find this podcast obviously at BlueRainGallery.com on the menu bar under podcast. Like to also encourage everybody to visit our online store by going to BlueRainPrintShop.com and bring art into your everyday life. <laughs>